We're sitting there, right? Good morning and welcome. In a few moments, we will be welcoming our official party. I ask that all cell phones are turned off or set to silent. After we welcome the graduates, we will remain standing for our national anthem. Please be upstanding for the entrance of the official party.
please remain standing for our national anthem. Please be seated. Everyone, please be seated. <laughs> Welcome parents and family, students, staff, and members of the IGBIS board to our third graduation ceremony. Each graduating class is unique in their own way. And this year's class is particularly talented group of students. And we are fortunate that in today's graduation, we will have an opportunity to see their many talents on display. Our almost graduates will be sharing their thank yous soon as well. And as they have been greatly supported during their time at IGBAS by their parents, their teachers, and their fellow students. In this spirit of appreciation, I would like to start this by saying thank you to the group themselves. Each class makes their mark on the school, and your mark can be clearly seen through, first through your leadership in so many different areas of the school, and it can also be seen through the energy that you have brought to everything you have done and most of all through your sense of fun. So I, I am very thankful for everything that you have contributed and I want to thank you today for all of your roles this year. Thank you. I would now like to call on our head of school, Mrs. Ann Fowles, to the stage to give the head of school address. Good morning, honoured guests, board members, parents, staff, students, friends of IGB International School, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2018. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this, our third IGBIS graduation ceremony. Today, we are honouring the students as they celebrate the completion of their school years and prepare to embark on the next phase of their lives. Most of these students, and I checked yesterday, it's just fantastic to see how many of these students have been with the school since we opened four years ago. In these four years, IGBIS has become the first school in Malaysia to offer all four IB programs. And it is the only school that not only has accreditation with the Council of International Schools, but this year we heard the fantastic news 
that we are also accredited with New England Association of Schools and Colleges, which is the accrediting authority for prominent universities like Harvard, Yale, and so on. So, there we are at the very front after only four short years. But as we think about our school, it's the kind of community that we've built that makes us truly special. One, where we, where we ignite minds and impact lives, but more importantly, is the community, the relationships, the collaboration and the support that we have for each other. This is a day to recognise the achievements of our graduating class. As I stand here, especially hearing the national anthem being played and the pomp and ceremony as everyone came forward, it makes me think of my own graduating times for my children not so long ago. My youngest child graduated from university. As parents, we're very proud when this day comes. And so first of all, I would like to acknowledge all of the parents who are in this room and for their contribution to bringing their children this far. Please join me in thanking the parents. <laughs> Among us is another group of people that I would like to acknowledge, the teachers of these students. Not just the grade 12 students, um, teachers that worked with the students this year, but all those dedicated professionals that came before them in the 12 or 13 or 14 years that these students have been at school. Let's please thank our amazing teachers. <laughs> this ceremony is a celebration of achievement, but also of change. Now, we, not so long ago, about four weeks ago, we had the final assembly for the graduating students or the grade 12 students as they were then. And afterwards I reminded them as they prepared for their exams that were about to begin. It was time to put together all the um, skills and abilities that they'd learn and put those into practice. I also reminded them that it wasn't time for last minute cramming it was time to, for reflection, for them to be sure of their strategy to approach each of their exams to the best of their abilities and with confidence drawing on all of the skills that they had learned. It's a bit like preparing for a campaign, not a briefing. Prepare for one event at a time with the end goal in mind. And this is what a life for all of us as adults is often like. We live in a fast cha changing world and a prepared answer, much as you might have practiced it, in the end might not be the best way forward. Now with life beyond school about to begin, whether it is one of the finest universities that some of our students have been accepted for or other things that they've decided to do, please remember these key concepts. Live life to the full, but have a long-term plan in mind for what you want to do and how you are going to get there. Take things one step at a time. Reflect on what you know and your strategy to approach new things. There are different perspectives and not always one right answer. Take action with confidence, drawing on all of your skills and be proud, really proud. You have come a long way and you have a promising future in front of you. Students, your parents have done all that they can to support you in your growth and to put you on the right path. The school and your teachers have added to this by giving you a well-rounded IB education and the academic skills required for university and beyond. But now it is time for you our graduating students to leave the familiar world of home and school and face a new and exciting future. We believe that you are ready to take on the new responsibilities this will entail. 
ready to grasp opportunities for personal growth and hard work. Indeed, ready for the challenges that the world outside of school will present to you. I'm sure that everyone here today will join me in wishing our graduating class every success. I now hand you back to Dr. Vidyakana. Thank you, Mrs. Fowles. This year we have a few musical performances that have been composed by our grade 12 students as part of their diploma music course. In honor of our grade 12 student Kako, students Kirillai and Alice Yi, accompanied by Mrs. Hadwick Dujardin, will play Kako's original composition titled Rondo.
you very much to our performers. One of our annual traditions at graduation is for grade 12 students to select classmates to speak on their behalf and address the IGBIS community. To give that address, it is my great pleasure to call on Zulaika and Abdallah. Zulaiha and Abdallah, and today we're going to tell you a little story about the very group sitting atop this stage. Four years ago, in a galaxy far, far away, 13 of us hopped aboard a recently constructed and brand new rocket ship called IGBIS, which promised to ignite our minds and impact our lives. It was an attractive opportunity riddled with unsung potential and uncertainty. <clears throat> Nevertheless, we plopped our little ninth grade bottoms onto the seats, buckled in tight, and I hoped for the best. Now, right from the very beginning, we were propelled into what we thought then as grueling tasks, responsibilities, workloads, and deadlines weighing down on our shoulders as we progressed through grade 9 and 10 on the planet MYP. Little did we know, it was merely training for the looming storm ahead, the IBDP. <laughs> As the cohort of cadets prior to us embarked on their journey to the formidable planet, we would hear of the ominous DP and feared the foreboding horrors it entailed. What we faced on planet MYP was nothing compared to what awaited us. Though I admit, it did help us to a certain degree. To this day, you might catch us in our sleep, whispering the 10 IB learner profiles to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside, to the cadets on planet MYP and the first year DP students going through school right now. Just stay focused, organized, and know that you are more than capable of tackling the challenges ahead with persistence and grit. Trust me, many of us didn't anticipate how quickly everything would happen, and at times we felt doubtful in our ability to keep pushing on. But here we are, on the stage, stronger than ever before. However, this moment did not come without great effort. To achieve our mission of obtaining the coveted IB diploma, located on planet IBDP, we had to step up to the plate and prove ourselves worthy of receiving such a grace. Venturing into the dark vacuum of space called for immense and unprecedented growth to occur with, within every single one of ourselves. While some of us grew unfairly tall, <laughs> leaving the rest of us shorties behind. It goes without saying that every individual on this stage has grown not only physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. We have all grown to acquire a sense of independence, flexibility, and most importantly, maturity. As expected in any epic journey through the galaxy, many astro asteroids and pieces of space debris were encountered along the way. We couldn't have maneuvered the rocket ship without the expertise of the teachers and members of staff here at IGBIS. Experts who all used their skills and experience to make this journey just a little bit easier. Although, there were some teachers that ventured off rocket ship IGB. Brigadier General Thompson, Commander Hawks, Princess Wiley, <laughs> Chief Science Officer Settle and Vice Chief Science Officer Cameron, Communications Officer Mullen, Counselor Davidson, Translator Deontay, Anthropologist Douglas, and Vice Admiral Braun, all of whom were seduced by the dark side. <laughs> Thankfully, the remaining IGB crew sent for reinforcements, and we were soon boarded by a new team of superior officers that helped us with the rest of our journey to plan IBDP. Regardless of, the, of how long or short the duration of time they have taught us for, Every one of them have worked to their best ability to equip us with the knowledge and skills we now possess to successfully navigate planet IBDP and the world we're about to be thrust into. Alas, upon reaching the barren planet, we embarked on, a f on our final trek towards the IB Diploma Jewel, leaving our teachers behind for the final step of our journey, 
the daunting final examinations overseen by the overlord IBO. At last, everything we had learned over the years became inexplicably clear, and all in the universe came into alignment. Everything made sense now, the rigorous training, the knowledge, and the skills we had honed over the years. Yes, even anti-differentiation and the fishbone diagram. It had all come to fruition. Our success relied on a combination of some of our most daring adventures, such as the extended essay abyss, the jagged terrain of never-ending IAs, the ever-demanding Cass Hill, and the jagged, no, oh, and the rickety bridge of TOK that very loosely connected our subjects together. <laughs> While some of us worked together to find the jewel of jewels, no collusion, kids, some of us worked alone. But in the end, we all made it to that dark and dusty cavern in the center of an active volcano on planet IBDP. And we found it, the shining beauty of the IB diploma. If not for the brimming determination of every cadet sitting on this stage, we would not be here. If not for the unrelenting support every teacher and member of staff at IGBIS have given us, we would not be here. And most importantly, if not for the abounding love and care showered upon us by every single one of our parents and family members, we would not be here. Every one of us have been shaped in some way or form by every single parent, teacher, staff member, and student we have encountered along our journey. It is the ceaseless dedication and unending support of those around us which have kept us grounded and earthbound when our heads were lost in space. The pinnacle, of our the pinnacle of our success is just as much a culmination of our individual efforts as yours. You have helped us reach this very special moment in our lives. So on behalf of all of us, thank you for everything you have done to support us, sacrificing your time, energy, and sanity. Our story would not exist without you. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed our little story about the epic journey we endured to get here. <clears throat> Just one last time, I would like to acknowledge the achievements of the people on this stage. <clears throat> and mark my words, people, you will be seeing us again in one capacity or another. Some of us will be the greatest doctors that change the medicine industry forever. Some of us will be world leaders changing the world with a push of a button. <laughs> and some of us will be successful business people changing the world with all of that money. I hope all of you can be happy and, and succeed in life and give back to society in ever which way we can. In the immortal words of our dearly departed Princess Leia, may the Force be with you always. It's now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker. We are very honored to have with us today a special guest, someone whose words resonated so much with our students at our career day in February that we felt compelled to invite him back again. He is a person who has experienced great success and yet has also needed to reinvent himself in the face of challenging circumstances, all of which have contributed to his perspective on life and the future. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Rafiq Jumaboy. I think the only reason I was asked back was because they like my jokes. <laughs> But today I'm going to be a little bit more serious. This is a great milestone. Celebrate it, enjoy it, but it's only a fleeting moment because we are on a continuum. Um, I'm not coming here today to pontificate on what you should do with your life, um, but really more to share some of my thoughts, um, some of my own experiences, and what I've learned from the journey that I've taken. And I hope that some of those will resonate with you and will give you something to think about. 
I think one of the great things that you have all achieved by having the IB is that you've learned to think. And that, I think, is probably the most valuable capability from what you've learned. So let me, let me turn to the subject of what I'm going to talk about. We've been hearing a lot about change. People talk about the technological and industrial revolution. We're into the fourth phase, you know. Um, and we talk about computing power. We talk about the fact that your handphone today has got more computing capacity than the IBM Big Blue of the 1990s. Um, you're talking about the speed of the internet. Um, when we get to today, um, you download a movie in 26 minutes if it's a two gig movie. Uh, in the 5G economy, we're talking about downloading that same movie in 3.5 seconds. So the speed of change is accelerating. Um, at the same time, there are new ways in which we are learning about knowledge and differentiating knowledge from information. In many ways, um, what does this mean uh, when it comes to you and me? Right? Um, we've got this process acceleration. If you think about the Industrial Revolution, what's happened is that processes have been put in. In the old days, um, a craftsman would build a product. Then came the Industrial Revolution and you could have you know, 10,000 people owning a car because you could actually automate the process and get a faster way of making things. And what this new generation of machinery and technology is going to do is to make that even more capable. So what used to be built by a human being can now be built by a robot. What you used to think in terms of thinking can now be thought through artificial intelligence. So what does that actually mean when it is then applied to methods of communication in terms of knowledge? And how is that manifested? The nature of factories is going to change. You're probably going to see robots in factories and not people. Even healthcare, with artificial intelligence, face recognition, and the ability to understand emotions by technology, uh, the machine is going to be more capable of analyzing you than a doctor. Um, and the machines will be self-thinking. Think about what's happening with banking. We used to think of a bank where you went in, you took your money out, then came ATMs. But today, with things like WeChat, everybody is a mobile ATM. So I don't need to go to a bank anymore. I can go to my friend and say, by the way, I, I need $50. Can you give me $50 now? I'll transfer the money to you right away on the phone. So every one of us becomes a mobile ATM. So what I'm actually saying here is that a lot of issues, a lot of things that we think are, are constants are going to be changed. They're going to be disrupted. They're going to disappear. So in terms of what you're going to face, as I see it, and this is my view, I may be completely wrong, I'm not a futurologist, but what I'm seeing is the redefinition of work. Um, I don't know how many of you are aware of the word gig economy, right? Everything becomes a gig. So we are, we're, we're doing a gig and we move on. So the idea that you know, I'm going to start off by being a doctor, I may not end up as a doctor in 25 years. And I'm actually proof of that. I started off as an accountant, and I think I've done nothing about accountancy for the last 35 years. <laughs> right? Um, so I think what that also is saying to us is let's also look, come back to the issue of knowledge and information. In the old days, when you studied, and I think one of the great things about the IB is that you, you, you've come to understand 
that you don't need to study everything uh, by, by memory. If you think about it, it's exactly what's happened in the real world outside of humans. What we're doing is we're saying, put the memory stuff on the cloud and put the computing power in the computer or on my handphone. And in a way, as a human being, you're doing the same thing. You're saying, all that information is out there on the internet. I just need to know how to compute it in order to do what I'm doing for myself. Now, what does that mean? That means that we cannot stop learning. This business of saying, well, I'm going to go to university, I'm going to get my degree, and then I'm done with study. Sorry, guys. The study never ends. That's the new world that we're living in. We're constantly upgrading, we're constantly changing, we're constantly um, uh, becoming adaptable. That is the key thing. We talked about IQ at the beginning, then we talked about EQ. I would like to suggest to you the word AQ, your adaptability quotient. So now, all this is great stuff, right? Or lots of theory. Now, how does it affect you? How should you be reacting to all this? And that was actually the core of my message today. We know that jobs are going to change. Does that mean that I just take two years off for my, for my sabbatical and don't do anything because everything's going to be changed by the time I come back? Um, or, Dad's pretty well off. I don't really need to work, I'm just going to have a bit of fun, right? Um, I don't think you can take that attitude today because what you're doing is you're building a product and the product is you. And let me tell you what I suggest to you what I mean. See, I had built a very large business. Um, I started off as a director of a small company when I was 28 years old, and by the time I was 42, I built a billion dollar business. By the time I was 45, I'd lost the business. And it wasn't because the business was bad, but because I had to take a stand on an issue, and that resulted in my being thrown out of the, bus out of the company. Why did I do that? I'm no great perfect person or that I have a, a, you know, a monopoly of wisdom. It's just that I believed that something was wrong and I wasn't prepared to sit by and watch it happen in front of me when I'm the MD of the business. Mm -hmm. And the end result was that I had to take on the board and you never win when you take on a board. Mm -hmm. right? So I was out. <coughs> what happened to me then was that I started to realize that the aura that we carry around with us of how we are successful people and how important we are suddenly disappears. Because we, we, we get so carried away by the success that we've had that we don't realize that it's got nothing to do with you. It's because you are sitting in that seat, you are the chairman of that company or you're the MD of that company or you're the guy in the front. And the company's aura is what you're carrying around with you. So you think you're great. But when you don't have the aura around you, who are you? That's when you ask yourself, who am I? What do I really want to be in my life? And I had to ask that question at 46. Right? You guys are lucky. You're asking that question today. So you've got a lot of time to work it out. Right? But to, let, me, let me sort of answer you in terms of how I saw that. The first, I, and, and I, I divide it into three quite separate issues. The first, what is your body of work? What is it that you are known for in terms of what you've learned and what you've done? Because that is how you will be defined as a person. Now, does that mean that I am a great brainy person? Does that mean I'm a good accountant? Does it mean that I, I'm good at maths? 
Is it because I'm good at management? Is it because I'm a good dancer? Each of us has a different way of, of expressing that body of work. And so the first thing that I would ask you to think about is what is it that you think is your passion and what you are comfortable with? I mean, some of us are very good with our hands. Do you have to go by the definition of other people in terms of what you should be or shouldn't be? Or should you say, look, I'm really good at making things, and that's what I'm going to do? Or is it because I move very well and I should be an athlete, and I don't care about the fact that I could also be a doctor? So I'm just saying, think about what it is that you're going to make into your body of work. And I think those of us who've read Malcolm Gladwell know that it takes 10,000 hours to be an expert. Right. So, what are you going to tend to spend the 10,000 hours of your life learning to be an expert at? So, that's the first thing. The second is what I referred to earlier, um, and that is how autonomous are you? How are you able to move around? How are you able to adapt? Can you collaborate with other people? Because in our world today, it is not about hierarchical structures, but it's about collaborative structures. That means we need to be able to work with other people. We need to know where to find these people. We need to be able to access what they know in order to do what we need to do. So it's not as it was in the past, where I tell you or you know, I don't actually acknowledge your contribution, but take the credit and do it for myself and then say, well, I'm a great guy. That hierarchical structure is breaking down because with social media, I'm going to find out pretty fast that I, I copied your idea. Somebody else will get out there and tell me. Right? So, second point is how autonomous, how, uh, how much adaptability do you have? And the third thing, which I think combines all this, is what is your life purpose? Why are you here? What do you want to do? And I, 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 I want to give you two questions to ask yourself in terms of defining that. What can I contribute? What am I good at contributing? Right? And, what, and that is my passion. That's where I can contribute the most. And the second is, why am I the right guy or girl for this job? Why would somebody want me for, to do this? Because I'm the best person for this particular position. And you have to believe that. Um, it took me a long time to realize after I lost my position. I didn't work, by the way, for five years after that when I lost my position and gave me a lot of time to think. But what came out of it was what really is, t what turns me on? What is my passion? What is my contribution that I want to make? And if I believe in it strongly enough, I will attract to myself the kind of people to whom I can make that contribution to, which is maybe why I'm here today, mm -hmm. right? Um, I then want to sort of look at that in the context of where I find myself today, which I think is something that you folks are going to be facing a lot. And that is we are in a totally open environment. Everything you say, do, can be photographed, can be put on Facebook, can be tweeted about, uh, etc. So there is no privacy. So then it comes back to what are these three things? What are you known for? How do you work with other people? What is your purpose? That then becomes your brand. And that is what you will be known as. And if you can be consistent to that, you become very, very powerful. Because you're going to be judged. You're going to be exposed in a way that my generation and your parents' generation didn't have to face that. Um, so, if I put all that together and I say I've got a very exposed environment but I now have a brand, I know 
what I am, where I'm trying to go. And I'm not saying this is going to happen overnight. It took me five years at the age of 45 to try and work it out for myself. So this is not an instant solution that tomorrow morning you'll know about it. It's an evolutionary process. And this is where I come back to the role of you all who are sitting in the audience as parents. If you think that your parenting days are over because your child has graduated, please think again. In this new environment, it's all very well for us to pontificate and say, son or daughter, you need to do this, and this is how you're going to do it, and I brought you up, and I know better because I'm older. The answer is you don't. You are going to have to lead by example as well. You are going to have to understand this new world. You're going to have to think about your technology. I think we've got a crying child out there. Um, so what I, what I really... What I really want to be able to get across to you all is please, as parents, your journey with your child is not ended. You're going to have to support them. You're going to have to provide them with ideas. It's no longer a question of, I tell you, you do this, because we're, we're past that. You guys are adults. And you're not going to take very kindly, and I know from talking to some of you before I gave this talk, that um, many of you don't relate with your parents. You want to get away from them. You want to do your own thing. And what I want to say to you is there's nothing wrong with that. But you as parents are going to have to understand that. You know, I went to a university called Oxford, and I was so keen that my daughter went there. And she deliberately screwed up the interview. <laughs> and I was so, so upset. Because she's very, very bright. In fact, she's uh, uh, you know, graduating as a, doctor, a doctorate uh, in, in, in philosophy uh, in, in, a, in a month's time. And I said, why, did, I, why would you not go to one of the finest institutions? She says, Dad, I'm going to do my own thing. And I don't want all your friends looking over my shoulder. And so she went to Durham. My point being here, row your own boat, it's fine. It didn't stop her, and it, in fact we became better friends as a result. So my issue is, parents, your job ain't over. So as I end, um, I think I would like to also mention one last thing in putting all this together is a word that I heard from you uh, both as we stood up on the stage, uh, what, which resonated with me. Um, you said we're becoming more adult. Actually, I'm saying please be more like a child. Mm. Because it's that sense of wonder, it's that sense of wanting to learn that keeps us all young, including old codgers like me. Right? And I would like to just end by quoting someone who revol revolutionized modern dance, a lady called Pina Bausch. In fact, the full name is Philippine Bausch, that was the name, she was a German woman. Revolutionized modern dance. And when she inherited the dance company that she took over in, in, in Germany, many of the dancers were actually in their 30s. And people were saying, well, how can you have dancers who are, you know, 32? I mean, they're, they're past it. You know, it's, it's only when they're 18 or 20 that they, that they have the energy and the style. And these, this is what she said. She said, you have to be authentic. I'm not concerned with the way my dancers move, but what moves my dancers? Mm. What moves you? That is how we will define you. And I wish you all the very best. Thank you very much, Mr. Rafiq.
Our second musical performance is also an original composition by Sumire Oenishi. Sumire and Wern Shin will be forming, performing two pieces, Sumire's song Travelers and also the classic Love's Joy. Please join me in welcoming them.
well done. Thank you so much for that. We have now arrived at the awards portion of our ceremony where we honor the outstanding achievements of our grade 12 students. I now call on our head of school, Mrs. Ann Fowles, our IGBS board member, Mr. Tofik bin Ismail, kindly standing in for Mr. Chua today, and our diploma coordinator, Ms. Mary Boyd, to present the awards. present the salutatorian award. This is the second highest academic award awarded to the student who has attained consistently outstanding results across the two years of the diploma program. The conditions are the second highest academically ranked student based on <coughs> grade 12 semester one um, reports and semester two grades, attended IGBS in both years, demonstrate a consistent commitment and achievement across all subjects and consistent, com consistent commitment in all aspects of the DP core. The student has been awarded, the, the salutatorian award, has consistently achieved top grades, incredibly close to those of our fellow Victorian. She is in receipt of a Cambridge offer to read engineering at Newham College in Cambridge with the conditions to get 777 in our higher level subjects, chemistry, maths, and physics. Not only is she an incredibly hardworking and academically able, she is a genuinely lovely human being who is kind, thoughtful, polite, and generous. You've just heard her play violin. Many congratulations to Wang Shen. I joined IGB International School in August of 2016, I never realized how much of an impact that less than two years could have on me. This time has passed extremely fast, and I've been given the honor of standing on this stage as the salutatorian of the great, an achievement I never expected. It feels surreal to think that this is the last time I will be required in school, and that I will not have to study for the next four months or so especially after studying nearly non-stop for the majority of my life. Words will never be enough to express my thanks towards everyone involved in my experience of undertaking the IBDP. First, and most importantly, I thank my parents for taking great care of me and constantly reminding me of my goals so that I continue working hard to achieve them. Also, thank you both for accompanying me during the almost daily late nights and the positive words of encouragement during low times. Without your unwavering support throughout these stressful IBDP years, I don't think I would have the privilege of being up here making this speech now. Thank you to all of my friends whose presence and occasional antics have made classes more fun, making the program bearable and relieving some of the stress through laughter and light-hearted talks of the future. Thank you to all the people I pass in the hallways every day, unconsciously doing little things which bring a smile to my face, momentarily forgetting about the pressure of every aspect of school. Last, but certainly not least, thank you to all the teachers 
for guiding us throughout this eventful journey, <coughs> helping us not only become better students, but better people. Thank you, Mrs. Fowles and Mr. Arcidiakono, for your endless support and motivation to be the best that we can be. I would also like to thank the following teachers. Ms. Boyd, for always being there for us to talk to, believing in us, and for offering us sweets to stay awake. <laughs> Mr. Mitchell, for helping all of us with our university essays, scholarship applications, and caring for our well-being. Mr. Mark and Mr. Thompson, for keeping English classes fun and entertaining. Mrs. Evans, for performing the miracle of transforming the six of us with no knowledge of Spanish into proficiently fluent Spanish speakers and writers, and rewarding us with the stickers we all long to receive. Mr. Spivey Jones, for livening up the class with his witty jokes. Ms. Barsega and Mr. Cameron, for your tremendous guidance with my EE. Dr. Dean, Mrs. Knowles, and Ms. Settle, for taking us through what is deemed as the hardest HL subject. Mr. Evans and Mr. Mark, for coaxing us out of our shells to voice our views in TOK. Ms. Shotar, for your constant reminders to reflect. <laughs> and Mr. Marshall, for making us cookies in high-stress situations. And to all the other teachers whose names I have not mentioned, thank you for invariably believing in our capabilities. I believe it is safe to say that without our teachers, none of us would be able to stand on this stage today. <coughs> Admittedly, we most likely won't be doing much productive work this break. After the rigorosity of the past few months, having deadlines after deadlines, tests, exams, and the additional task of writing class reflections, when we remember to, we're too mentally, emotionally, and physically exhausted to think about studying anymore. Even so, we shouldn't do nothing during these months. We should strive to have the time of our lives before university starts. Whether it be by trying something new, visiting a new country, or simply catching up on the movies we've missed. Make this holiday memorable and worthwhile. Because realistically, we may never have such a long break with no commitments ever again. At least until we retire in 50-ish years. <laughs> in a few months, when we receive our results on the 7th of July, we will hopefully realize that the struggle was all worth it and truly realize how large of a part everyone has played in helping us achieve our goals for the future we long for. And with these results, we can set new goals, reflect on the past, and plan for the future. It is a strange thought that we have developed close friendships within about two years, but we'll, we will be parting to opposite ends of the world in just months without knowledge of when our paths will intersect again. From having long-winded debates in English class about whether a character died after a cliffhanger ending, to becoming extremely competitive when playing cahoots, in Spanish class especially, and our first few TOK classes when no one dared to say anything since we had no knowledge of the subject back then. We have shared many fond memories which we can reminisce on in the future, memories which will bring joy. To the dear graduating class of 2018, I thank each and every one of you for making these two years memorable and fun, despite the constant looming deadlines and assessments. It's cliche to say this, but through the struggles and hardships, we finally made it. To the younger prospective DP students, and even to my fellow classmates for the future, I think we could all benefit from procrastinating a little less and instead allocating time to rest rather than putting aside urgent work in favor of watching YouTube or dramas or playing Minecraft when we should be studying. I would also stress the need to set high expectations to work towards so we can feel a sense of achievement by reaching these goals. However, 
These should be personal goals and they should be achievable within our capabilities. Most importantly, never give up because giving up indicates that we have admitted failure. As Walt Disney once said, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. With this, I thank everyone for being here to celebrate with us today, and I wish everyone the best of luck for their futures. Thank you. Okay, the next award is the Valedictorian Award. This award is the highest um, academic award awarded to the student who gets uh, a standing report, uh, results across the two years of the DP, um, attends the, the um, school in grade 11 and grade 12. The award winner is the go-to person for solutions and the answers to everything. She is witty, wise, kind and generous with her time. Um, she is a founding member of the school, joined us in grade um, nine and instantly impressed all with her academic ability. This year's winner of the valedictorian award is Wayne Koo. assignments I've had over the past four years in IGBIS, speeches were always one I found the hardest to write. So naturally, a speech is the last high school assignment I ever have to write. No layout, no system, and so little instruction that I was truly at a loss of what to say. But after much thought, I eventually decided to simply speak from the heart and tell you all what I learned from my years in school. You might be thinking that I'm about to share the tips and tricks that I've learned that led me to this moment, which some 11th graders will no doubt be interested in. But that wouldn't be from the heart, that would be from the internet. So I decided to tell you some of the lessons I learned instead, and hope that you will retain them somewhere in the depths of your subconscious, ready to encourage you, to motivate you, to give you strength as you proceed on with your schooling career. Firstly, a lesson that I've only recently learned, to have confidence and to dare to be wrong. Throughout most of my school life, I was terrified of being even the slightest bit wrong, never answering any questions teachers posed in class because I didn't have the right answer prepared at the tip of my tongue. But in hindsight, how could I have? Surely whatever content any teacher teaches in class and proceeds to question students on would be new. In fact, the purpose of these questions often is to increase the depth of understanding of students. So why did I, and why did so many similar-minded students, throw away the opportunity to expand our ideas, opting to remain in a constant state of confusion, of not knowing whether the ideas in our heads are valid or not? Because much of the non-Ivy schooling system has trained us to only give the right answer, to give the answer the mark schemes desires causing us to fear being questioned on an unfamiliar topic, and even feeling shame when we answer something correct incorrectly once too many times. We are often unable to realize that in the process of learning, you can never know anything perfectly. Even the leading academics and experts don't completely know the subject they dedicated their lives to. So how is it fair to expect a young student like yourselves 
to know anything perfectly. I'm not saying you should ignore Mark schemes from here on out, but just encouraging all of you to have a little more confidence in expressing your opinion, to dare to express your thinking even when you might be wrong. Remember, there is no shame in expressing your opinion. Dare to be wrong, as every wrong answer is merely an opportunity to increase your understanding and broaden your knowledge. Secondly, embrace who you are. You are a unique, you are a unique combination of DNA in the form of living creatures we call human beings. You are not whoever sits beside you in class or whoever others like to compare you to. If that person can achieve higher grades than you or is more popular than you or outdoes you in your favorite sport, then good for them, but that's not you. In our world, no two people are built and brought up exactly in the same way. You may be classified into hundreds of groups with millions of people supposedly in the same category as you. But there will always be a little something every, ever so slightly different in each and every individual. You are not here to be like anyone else, to live in anyone's shadow. <coughs> Sometimes we get too caught up with what we think we want whether it be grades or money or fame, that we forget to live our life, choosing to waste it away, chasing a life that isn't even ours instead. Cherish what you have and embrace who you are. All your qualities, all your strengths, all your areas of improvement are a part of who you are. So be proud of them. If life is an exam, we are all taking a different paper, so there is no point copying anyone else. Everyone deserves to be their own person, to live their own life, and to do what is best for them, with no obligation to be as good as anyone else. Before ending my speech, I would like to thank the people who helped me achieve the level necessary to attain this honor of a valedictorian. Firstly, my parents, who supported me through every step of the way. My teachers, who regardless if they knew me for four months or four years, have put in the effort to ensure I could achieve sufficient su uh, understanding of their respective subjects. I'd also like to pay respect to my classmates, because while I stand here as this year's valedictorian, I more importantly am a member of this year's graduating class. While I may have obtained the highest scores, I by no means am any better than anyone else sitting on this stage. Everyone here has showcased their hard work determination, and strength in completing their school career, finally reaching graduation today. Despite procrastination and pleading for extended deadlines, everyone has put in the effort to complete their assignments and perform to the best of their ability. I deserve to be proud to be the valedictorian, but every, and everyone else behind me deserves to be just as proud of their accomplishments. In writing this speech, I was encouraged to write about what a valedictorian means to me, a title I, knew, I only knew existed three years ago, and a word I learned how to spell less than a week ago. Because of this, I can safely say writing this speech was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my entire schooling career, as it truly does need to come from the heart, and will be meaningless otherwise. I hope you've gained something from my speech today, I hope I've opened your mind, even if it is the tiniest bit, to new mentalities and ways of thinking. I hope the lessons I shared with you today will help you learn to be brave and choose paths that suit you, not anyone else. In the words of Robert Frost, take the road less traveled by, as that may make all the difference. Thank you. the Harvard Book Award to honor the significant academic achievements of our salutatorian and valedictorian. Both received the Harvard Prize Book Award, only 2,000 of which are awarded in the world each year. Thank you to Tan Shri Deto, Dr. Lin Si Yan, member of the ITBS board, Chairman Emeritus, Harvard Graduate Alumni Association Council at Harvard University, and President, Harvard Club of Malaysia, 
himself a Harvard educated economist and a British chartered scientist. The winners of this award, through their intelligence and variety of achievement, exemplify Harvard's commitment to excellence. It is with huge pleasure and enormous prize, pride that we present these prizes to Wei Lin and Wang Xi. is the Global Citizen Award. This is award is presented to the student who embraces the qualities of a global citizen. This student has a strong sense of personal identity and is respectful of the beliefs and cultures of others. This student is caring and encourages a sense of community by being a contributing force in the life of the school. This student has a strong commitment to action and service to affect positive ch change in the world and further the cause of international understanding. The student demonstrates strong collaborative problem solving, listening and consensus building skills and is conversant in at least two, la two languages. The, the award recipient has addressed and met all of these conditions consistently and so impresses all with her energy and commitment. As a leader of, for Gin, she was able to make connections with iCycle in order to propose a recycling system at, at IGBIS. Her organization of schools were outstanding, as was her drive to implement the school-wide recycling system. She was selected as the Secretary General for EOS MUN 2017. She also became Senior Advisor to the Secretariat for EOS MUN 2018 was being a delegate for demonstrating a strong organisation and leadership skills. She spent countless hours running meetings and organising teams of students in order to run a successful event. Not only has the award winner impacted life at IGBIS, she has also impacted lives in her own community. For her ballet studio, she designed um, the annual concert poster for uh, years. She used her creative skills to paint 13 canvases that were auctioned during the 20th anniversary of the 20th Rotary Club, uh, which raised more than 11,000 ringgits after selling six paintings. The money was used to build solar panels in Sarawak. She led a yoga club I won't go on, this will be one of the last. So she led a yoga club with enthusiasm and talent. She provided students with a wonderful outlet for relaxation and calm, student, uh, teachers too. Able to she was able to modify instructions and accommodate for all, prepare routines. Um, students commented that the, uh, that hour was the most peaceful hour during the stressful week. Um, as well as offering physical activity, she provided the kind of service to the community that was expected. I, I shall just present the award. The award winner is Rachel Ian. Wow, global citizen, I'm honored, but what does it mean? My first thought was, Malala, one of the famous global citizen recipients because her advocation of love and peace, which she demonstrated by not hating the Taliban even after they shot her, taught the world a lesson of kindness. Second, other famous global citizen recipients like 
Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau believes a global citizen, and I quote, is respectful to others, regardless of what they look like, the language they speak, the God they worship, or the person they love. And international law and human rights barista Amal Clooney, who tells the world a global citizen has the courage to say, this is our world now, and there are going to be some changes. Hence, it became clear to me that the Global Citizen Award can mean anything from like having a broad international understanding, being a collaborative, contributing force to the community, and understanding our actions as individuals affects positive change to the society. But that really should become clear if you listen to Ms. Boyd earlier. But what all those recipients had in common links back to the IB mission statement to make the world a better place. And that is exactly why the IB is so significant in providing us this holistic international education which nurtures us to be caring, open-minded, reflective, principled, and risk-taking individuals. And me, whilst I'm no famous barista, world leader, or Nobel Prize winner yet, I hope, I have the honor to be the very proud recipient of the IGBIS Global Citizen Award. And therefore, I have the opportunity to deliver the message of a global citizen here in our school, which is that our contributions here as students in our small community is a stepping stone to create a lasting global impact. But how? How can our actions here in IGBS possibly affect the international arena? If you promise to stay awake, I'll answer this question later. At the start of grade nine, when I first joined MUN, I considered myself a risk taker because I learned to boost my confidence, but also how to, um, I learned how to view global issues from the perspective of the country you're representing and thus develop an understanding of international relations and its impact on global issues. In Jin, I learned to be a communicator by working effectively with people across grade levels to organize the more than trash event. Yes, I think I annoyed everyone with too many notifications of managed back telling you to recycle. And yes, it was more of an opportunity to throw trash at the teachers, but it proved that we as a school could channel the waste we produced into something more useful, meaningful, and environmentally friendly. Setting up a yoga club helped me alleviate yes, another global, overlooked global issue mental well-being. With our workloads, I felt it was important to provide a platform for students to de-stress, to promote a balanced lifestyle, especially imperative in championing the IB diploma. If we can't take care of our own well-being, then how are we going to take care of the world's? My contribution could have not been possible without my teachers, whose dedication has been so inspiring. My parents, for being my guide and motivation, consoling me through my failures and celebrating my successes. And finally, my friends here on stage with me. So again, how can our actions here in IGBIS possibly affect the international arena? By recognizing that when we learn to be open-minded, risk-taking, balanced individuals, through our experiences, we can apply them into our future. And since our school provides a variety of experiences and opportunities to develop ourselves, the first step is to take it. For me and my fellow graduates, however, our time here is up. For me, I'll be moving on to Yale and US, a diverse, well-rounded university that provides me yet another range of opportunities. Yet, I will regrettably leave IGBIS still wanting to do so much more. I want to con continue contributing to Jin, teach yoga, and I even wanted to set a book club to share my passion with elementary and secondary students, but I've run out of time. So I guess that's not my opportunity to take anymore. It's yours. I think we all need to realize that if we as individuals are willing to grab the opportunities open to us, then make the most out of our holistic IB education, then really, we can all be global citizens. We can all ignite our minds and impact our lives. And we can all make a difference. Not just me. 
and it starts right now as a student, right here in IGBIS, and right now as a community. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations again to all of our award winners for their sp fine speeches and all of their achievements. It's now time for the presentation of diplomas. I'd like to call Mrs. Ann Fowles back to the stage and Miss Mary Boyd who will um, assist in the presentation of diplomas. So we have the award of the diplomas. The first diploma, the Wailing Coup. Second diploma, Wern Shin Sun. Sulaika Badlisha. Ernest Eng. Go card day. Yeah. <laughs> Hawaii one.
Xuan Yu and Wu. Joshua Oi. Ishak Abdul Latif. <coughs> Adosh Manosh. isn't here today, but we can congratulate her anyway. <laughs> Kok Ian So. Uchiyama. <laughs> Kako Saitsu.
Graduates, would you please rise? Please give a warm, loud, and long round of applause for the graduating class of 2018. The graduates, the graduates will now perform their own medley, Best Day of My Life. Just to give all of you a little bit of context, first of all, thank you very much for sitting through the assembly this far. Um, our grade when we joined in grade 9 was the very first group to perform this song, which has been performed in this school a few many two times, but um, it, this is kind of a way for us to come full circle and this is a silent plea to please not perform this song ever again in this group. <laughs> So here's our final performance of Best Day of My Life and It's Time. Oh, <laughs> 
I'm the one who let you down. 